Welcome to VMware vSAN Deploy and Manage tutorial. In the second module, we're going to discuss about storage fundamentals. The main objective of this module is to fill the gap of knowledge to learn VMware vSAN. So we will go through the common storage technologies and the characteristics of storage devices. And then we will explain about uh, different uh, type of storage architectures and also we will uh, talk about the SAN performance factors also. The common storage technologies are local storage, direct attached storage, network attached storage, and storage area networking. A local storage is the storage available with the server or host. So when you buy a server, you buy it with some hard disk and these hard disks are connected to a backplane and this backplane is connected to a RAID controller. So either you enter through the RAID BIOS or through some of the interface provided by your server provider. You create a RAID 1 or 5 or 6 as per your requirement. Then when you install the operating system, the disk will be available to the operating system and you install your OS and you use it. This is how a local storage work. The second one is direct attached storage. Sometimes the local storage available with the server is not enough to handle the storage requirement. In this case, you can buy a storage box. This storage box is just occupied with some disks and a backplane. It doesn't have a RAID controller or any other storage processors to create a RAID and to present it as a volume to your server. So you need to connect a SAS or SCSI cable from the storage system to the server. Then you can create volumes from the server using the RAID controller or the controller which you use to attach the DAS system to the server. So the good thing with this one is you can expand the storage of your server to multiple systems using storage box like a direct attached storage. But the limitation is this is accessible only to this server. You cannot share this to other servers. Next is network attached storage. Network attached storage consists of a disk, RAID controller and a small operating system. Maybe it is a Linux or Windows storage operating system. Sometime a proprietor have, a, sometime vendor have their own operating system and an Ethernet interface. And using this Ethernet interface, you connect the storage device to a network and from the network you can share to multiple hosts. To create logical disk, sometimes the storage provider give you an interface, web interface or a storage management tool. The advantage is this is cheap because it's an either network and it is available in 1 Gbps and 10 Gbps network. Network attached storage mostly used for file sharing purpose. Next is storage area network. It is a shared block or a file storage between many servers. One of the most used storage architecture. Now we call it as a traditional architecture. We will be comparing the vSAN with this architecture to talk about the advantage and the flexibility of vSAN. This storage is a SAN network which are heavy capacity and high performance capable. You can scale out up to 4 petabyte or 8 petabyte these days. So this is designed in a way which have multiple storage processor to provide high availability and caching for speeding the data transfer and it is an expensive network. Each storage comes up with an, uh, their own operating system from vendor and administrator control this either through a web interface or a storage management software. And further to this you need uh, special fiber channel switches for zoning to make the LAN available to the disk. So this need experts to be working on the storage and the zoning uh, to do any modification or changes in your storage area networking infrastructure. Following are the storage devices that most commonly used in the storage, uh, whether it is a storage area network or local storage or direct attached storage. So SATA disk, NLSAS and SAS have a rotating disk inside and this disk rotate from 7000 to 15000 rotation per minute 
to read the data. So based upon the disk and based upon the RPM, the performance of the disk may vary. Anyway, the SATA or NLSAS or SAS, the common parameters or the common performance considerations are it need high time to access the data. That means when you try to read something, it will take some time to read compared to SSD. SSD it works in a different way, so it have very low access time. The second one, less I/O performance. SSD have many IOPS available compared to SATA or NLSAS or SAS disk. Because of the rotating disk, the possibility of failure is very high compared to SSD and SAS or NLSAS or SATA which require high CPU power when you compare with SSD. When you compare the IOPS for SSD and SAS, there is a big difference between the IOPS available for SSD and SAS. SSD can provide you high number of IOPS compared to SAS. The cost of SAS or NLSAS or SATA, we can say the rotating disks are very less compared to SAS, especially when you want to catch up higher capacity of SSD, the price is very, very high. So when you need performance, you can buy SSD. Wherever you can compromise with the performance, you can go for rotating disk like SAS or NLSAS or SATA. A storage design or a SAN storage design we can divide into three parts host component, fabric component and storage component. If you are using an iSCSI network we can replace the fabric component with the either network switches. Let us continue with the fabric component. In the storage component you can see the bottom is mentioned storage array. We call it as a disk array also. Disk arrays are a group of multiple disk devices. So you have a two unit or one unit device with multiple number of disk and a backplane. And behind this disk array, you might see a SAS or a SCSI connection. And you can run a cable from this one either to the nest disk array or to the storage processor. The storage processor communicate with these disk arrays and provide RAID or LAN functionality to the server. A storage uh, device consists of multiple storage processor and this will help us for the seamless transition of uh, LAN and also the communication with the disk arrays in case of a failure of uh, other storage processor. So from this storage processor, we have equal lines going to SAN switches, multiple SAN switches. And these multiple SAN switches connect to the host servers. The host servers are installed with HBA card, which is a special card used to communicate with SAN switches or any fiber channel communication. For more understanding, look at the storage architecture picture here. So this is how a storage look physically from the front side. And this is the view of uh, backside. So this uh, disk enclosures have uh, SAS connectivity, which is a 12 Gbps or uh, 16 Gbps uh, connectivity, and these are connected to the storage processor. And you can see a one unit SPS. This is a power supply feeding power to the storage processor and also to the uh, disk enclosures. So whenever there is a power failure. This SPS consists of some batteries, so this battery will uh, continue working until the cache releases the data into the disk. Now look at the storage block diagram here. Here I have uh, one uh, storage processor block with uh, four storage processor and three disk array enclosures. Each disk array enclosures are occupied with a different uh, type of disk. The first one with the flash, SAS and NLSAS. And the storage processor is connected to the first disk array enclosure using a backend connection SAS. And from this disk array enclosure, it is connecting to the second uh, disk array enclosure. And from the second one, it is connecting to the third disk array enclosure. And this is my final disk array enclosure. And I'm running a cable, a backend connection from the third disk array enclosure to the storage processor. So this is working like a loop. So whenever there is a failure, the other channel will take care of the communication and also the good thing is when you want to scale out the storage 
uh, disk array enclosure so you don't need to run a one is to one cable between the storage processor and the disk array enclosures uh, you can manage the connectivity from the nearest disk array enclosures and you can see there is a cache memory here this cache memory is associated with each storage processor so whenever there is a data come to the storage processor it will be written to the cache and the cache will destage this uh, data into the disk array enclosures so each storage processor have cache memory and between the storage processor these caches are mirrored so whenever there is a failure for the storage processor the cache will be uh, destaged from another storage processor the passive storage processor to the uh, disk array enclosure and when you look at the front end connectivity you can see there are multiple connections going to the fiber channel switch and also from each host or server there are multiple connections coming to the uh, fiber channel switch and we need to do some uh, configuration called the zoning here and based upon the zoning the lens or the logical unit that you created in the server will sorry in the storage will appear to the server so whenever there is a failure at this point or in a storage processor point still the other path will take care of the communication and the result of failure is a reduction of bandwidth but the availability will continue so this is another look of uh, same architecture where when you write uh, something from the host to the storage uh, based upon the active storage processor it will go to SPA or SPB let us say SPA is active so this will be written into the memory and at the same time this is mirrored so a copy of that will be written into SPB so before it uh, write to the SAS if there is any failure or something then the SPB will take care of the destaging of data and here you can see the SSD is mentioned as a hot data and uh, SAS or NL SAS is mentioned as a cold data which means that the most frequently uh, readed or uh, data will be written into the uh, SSD disk and the less frequent access data will be written into uh, the NL SAS or uh, rotating magnetic disk uh, uh, devices so every day based upon the usage of data based upon the uh, read the storage will optimize and rearrange the data and the most uh, used data will be moved to uh, SSD and the least used data or the least accessed data will be uh, optimized and moved to uh, SAS or NL SAS devices so this is the architecture of storage I took some time to explain the architecture of a traditional storage is uh, to give an understanding that how complicated it is and how much uh, manual uh, inputs are required or how much manual processes are required to uh, create a storage or to configure a storage and to appear it into any XSI host or a server and to work on top of it so understanding the complexity and all these things will uh, help you to realize the real value or the real advantage of the technology that we are going to explain is vSAN next is about the storage performance factors when you're gonna buy a storage device or a storage these are the major things that you need to consider before you're gonna buy a storage device or a storage box the number of IOPS available with the storage or storage devices is the amount of read or write operation that could be done in one second time but IOPS itself will not uh, uh, tell you what is the real performance of storage device you need to think about other factors for example throughput throughput is a multiplication of IOPS and IO size so which measure the data transfer rate to and from the storage media in megabits per second so if higher the IO size and higher the IOPS number then you will get a higher throughput next is latency so whenever you request an IO it will take some time to complete right and this is called average latency for example if you are using a flash device the request IO will be served very quickly but if it is a SAS or NL SAS the IO operations or the IO request will take some time so there will be higher latency let us conclude module 2 in this module we talked about the storage technologies the different storage technologies and also I explained about the storage devices difference and we took some time to explain the storage architecture especially the traditional storage architecture and also we talked about the major uh, performance parameters or factors of a SAN 
so this will help you to uh, realize the real advantage of vSAN when you're gonna implement or understand vSAN because you see many complexities are there when you wanna implement a traditional storage or when you want to manage a traditional storage there are many components uh, you need to work on it you need experts to work on different different components so this all will give you a ground of uh, uh, storage technologies and also this will help you to understand vSAN uh, value and benefits and the flexibility of vSAN